This time on Low Boost, we're gonna wire up a boost controller into our Holly Terminator X on the E36 Turbo LS swap. Welcome back. This is my BMW E36 that I have turbo LS swapped and I have Holly Terminator X as an ECU inside the car. It's an LQ4 with a 72 millimeter Borg Warner turbo with a six speed transmission. I absolutely love it. But there's a couple things that I haven't been able to figure out and we're gonna fix some of those today. The turbo that I have in this car is a Borg Warner SXE372 with a 1.00 AR hot side, T4. Uh, this is an LQ4 six liter. And uh, if this was a 5.3 or a 4.8, I think that turbo would be perfect for this, but the six liter flows a lot more air. And I'm having some boost control issues up top uh, in higher RPM ranges on the, on the car. I have a Tile V60D wastegate, so it's really good at controlling boost, but actually I don't wanna, I'm trying to control it where it makes more boost, not to the point where I'm, I'm making too much and you need to pull it back. I currently have an AEM True Boost uh, that is wired up to into my dashboard, which I can control the duty cycle via the boost controller, but it's a fixed duty cycle on a three port Mac valve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, a, I'm gonna continue to use this three port Mac valve that I have but I'm gonna wire into my Holly Terminator X and show you guys how you can control the boost duty cycle a couple of different ways in the way that I think is gonna work best for my car. This is a three port Mac valve right here. And uh, it, you can get any, uh, any three port Mac valve will work. It doesn't need to be an AEM, but that's what this is because it came on the True Boost. It's got two wires attached to it. One is for positive and one is for ground. And it really doesn't matter which one's which, but I do have them labeled uh, red and black. So I'm gonna keep that consistent on one side. And uh, that now is wired into my AEM True Boost Boost Controller, which is on the left side here. Uh, not only is it a boost controller, but it's a gauge. So if I disconnect the ground from that, uh, that is triggering the, the uh, the Mac valve, um, it's still gonna function. I can turn it off and have it still function as a, as a boost gauge, but then I'm gonna run that ground wire into the Holly. I know some of you uh, BMW purists that are watching might be wondering, that is an E46 M3 steering wheel that I have in my E36. Yes, it fits. Yes, I made a video all on how to wrap it that uh, with that cool wrap on it, as well as actually installed in the car. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel to see videos like that. Okay, so on my car, I have my Terminator X actually going back into the factory um, PCM location for a BMW E36, and it all goes in there. And as you know, the Terminator X is a big loom that comes out. There are four inputs and four outputs that you can have on the Holly that can control different things. I currently have one that controls my fan, uh, you can have another one for an ethanol sensor, which I am also working on, but I'll cover in a different video because I didn't do that one yet. Um, and as well as uh, I'm going to have a third output, an output specifically for uh, my boost controller. So they give you this wi these wires that you see here. Um, I just have them tied up in there that way because I don't know if I'm still going to use them. Maybe I'll cut them and, and get rid of them or tuck them somewhere else when I'm totally done with them but I took one of the wires from here and it actually has a pin out. This wire here, uh, green and gray, is what I use for the boost controller. Now, um, I did it in the Terminator X first before I came out here and wired it in because it's gonna have to assign itself a, an output and I wanted to make sure that I had the right output on there to match up on here. Now what's great about Holly is um, the wires are labeled if you look really closely, if it's a newer Holly. Um, so the Terminator X will actually show the wire that's on here and that's how you can kind of match up in your ECU what it's gonna be designated for. 
So I ran this with some loom all the way to the other side. The Holly controls the duty cycle of your boost controller like on a Mac valve like this by um, grounding and ungrounding the, uh, attaching and then detaching the ground and pulsations, right? So um, at a 0% duty cycle, uh, the ground isn't functioning at all. And at a 100% duty cycle, the ground is almost constantly um, on. Uh, if it's a 50% duty cycle, it's gonna pulse like this and that controls the amount of air that's being let in and out of this valve here, which controls the wastegate pressure at the top of your wastegate. So I only have to wire our ground in. Everything else on this, the other, the power side is just powered up to uh, 12 volt keyed power um, on the E36 or on any car. I'll show you how to hook up the, I'll show you how to hook up these hoses based on your turbo and your wastegate, but because my turbo is mounted so low and you can't see anything, I'm just gonna do, uh, I'll just explain an illustration for you. I know a lot of people run these a lot of different ways, but this is exactly how I have mine. So if you look at the top, the solenoid controls the amount of vacuum pressure that gets pushed to the top of the wastegate. That forces the spring down and helps control the boost. So whatever your wastegate spring pressure is, at a 100% duty cycle, you could theoretically double it. So my wastegate spring is 9.77 pounds. So at a 100% duty cycle, I theoretically should be able to go to almost 20 PSI. But I don't wanna to go to 20 PSI, I wanna to go to 14. So you have to bleed it off and that's what the, the ECU is for. Now the bottom port on your wastegate goes into the turbo reading as well. Now you can hook up a boost pressure only source from a vacuum port on your intake, but I wanted to directly do it into my actual turbo itself. I feel like that's the most accurate way of doing it. So you have one port going teed off from your boost pressure source on your turbo to the bottom of the wastegate. And then the other part of the T goes into the solenoid that then goes into the top of your wastegate. And that is how you properly plumb the vacuum lines to control your boost controller solenoid. Now that I've explained all the wiring on here, uh, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did inside my Holly Terminator X. This episode is brought to you by Buyer Driveline. They're the BMW driveline specialists. Whether you have a factory BMW that you need a new drive shaft made for, or you want that one upgraded, or you have a BMW you're going to be doing a swap in and you need a custom drive shaft made, make sure you guys check them out. They can make just about any drive shaft for any BMW application, you name it. They're designed to handle power, not just factory BMWs. They'll also do a custom drive shaft for any swap you're gonna put into them, whether it's another BMW engine into a BMW, to JZ engine, or my favorite, LS swaps. They can make a custom drive shaft for literally anything BMW. If you use the link in the description below, you'll get 10% off any drive shaft you get from them. So make sure you guys check them out for all of your driveline needs. Before we get started and actually uh, programming everything, you have to add the input output onto your dash if you haven't done so already. So you're gonna have to go to toolbox, add individual config, I-O for input output. I'm gonna double click that. And you gotta go to default and then hit open. And that will take you, we'll add this button to the screen. It'll take you to the inputs and the outputs. We're gonna start off with outputs. All right, once you've added the separate input and output uh, tab up top, you go to outputs and you can create a name for it. I just put wastegate is my name creation for this. And then the type is PWM, and you wanna enable it. And this one's already assigned, it's J1B3. Then we are gonna hit configure, and this takes you to the triggers. So for number here, you're gonna want zero for the first one, and then and, and then for sensor input triggers, you're gonna put one, and the output will activate when boost PSIG is above four pounds. Um, that way the thing's not running all the time and burning out your Mac valve. And it'll turn off when boost is under two pounds. So when you're just cruising, it's not gonna be triggering. No linked outputs, nothing for timer. You're gonna go to PWM setup, right? So PWM setup, and this is the map. For me, I'm gonna have fixed. If you have a three port Mac valve, 
um, your frequency is going to be 31. But people have found that uh, if you have a four port Mac valve, you can have that set at 18 and it'll work the best. But for me, three port Mac valve, frequency 31. Um, my table units here are duty cycle and you can have the X axis and the Y axis be whatever you want. But mine was uh, boost PSIG and RPM, just the way that I'm setting this up to be the most efficient and uh, target boost is uh, on my Y axis. And you can see at the bottom I have RPM and I have this at a sliding scale specifically because before 50% duty cycle was fixed all the time but boost would fall off over 4,000 RPM. So above 4,000 RPM, I've ramped up the duty cycle to 60, 65, 70, 75, and 80, um, up almost all the way to red line. So it's progressive. It's not gonna hit as hard down low, but it'll definitely try to hold that boost up top, which is really what I need. And I don't wanna go over 14 PSI, that's my goal. So anything over 13.9 PSI, it's automatically gonna default to uh, 30 duty cycle over that to help control the boost and keep it under 14 PSI total. So no matter what, if it goes over 14 PSI, the duty cycle will cut itself down to 30 and help keep me under 14 PSI. So that is really how I'm running this, it's how I'm working it. So far so good, as I go, I have to kind of tune it up, turn it up a little bit more. Um, as you can see, I have the B3 output for number four and I dragged that down into wastegate. Uh, drag wastegate down into that output. So on my actual harness itself, you'll see that I, I will have it, um, the pin out on there. And what's great is it's marked on the wire. That way you can see. So that is how you set up duty cycle by RPM boost control in your Holly Terminator X. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I couldn't really find this too many places on YouTube or any other place myself. So um, I'm glad that I was able to make this for you guys. And um, as obviously as you guys saw on the computer, it was B JW B3 was the pinout. So what's really cool about the Holly is it's marked B3. So I have that following across the other side and then going into my loom here, here and then going over to my boost controller all the way over there. So now that it's all wired up and in the car, it's time to test and tune it. Um, so I have it set pretty low, and then as I go out and do some pulls on it, I can actually measure and make sure that I'm under the 14 PSI that I'm really trying to be at. Um, as I get closer and I can turn up the duty cycle by RPM and ramp it up as opposed to a fixed duty cycle, which is what it was before. So I hope this video was informative and helpful. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.